Hey, it's Dr. Richard McLean, and I've faced a huge injustice, and I've been ignored in my injustice. I'm relying on people in the public domain and those that oppose political prisoners and government tyranny and people who believe in a fair go and some compassion for all to share it until such time as I won't be able to be ignored anymore. The injustice I endured has been going for many years and it absolutely slaughters the Convention on the Rights of a Person with a Disability, of which I am one. Now prove with evidence on this page in this YouTube video, a phenomenon at work directly linked to my public profile and my person. It's victimized me beyond all human rights and dignity, and this has been the causation of my suicide attempt in February 2021. Afterwards, after I survived and I was revived from certain death, having been found with no pulse, um, the oppression actually got worse. I'm worth potentially multi-millions of dollars. All I need is a space in which this story is legend or validated, and then I'll be very much well off and I'll bankroll those who were pivotal in bringing it to justice, or helping to bring it to justice. I'm listing in this video today all the responsible agencies and organisations and people that have been pivotal in my destruction and my continued persecution. We all know, and scientists know, that black holes exist, although they've never been seen. And so it is that I cannot identify a conspiracy to prevent a course of justice to an actual T, but I can easily and absolutely render a pattern of my victimisation in regards to me personally that is impossible to consider coincidence. Further on from that, there is a phenomenon occurring embedded in Australian politics and society in general. If I contacted any one of my oppressors and I called them out, I would be gaslit or denied or blocked or worse. Um, but if I confront them all together in one video, naming them all, it might be a different story. Being persecuted or stalked by one person is bad enough, but being stalked by a whole gang of people is another level of hell altogether. That's when I came across the term gang stalking, and this term comes from, this following quote comes from a gang stalker's website. But don't go crazy. So much of what they do is subtle and it's designed to be easily deniable. But like a black hole, it isn't about seeing the hole itself, but the effects around the black hole. You can't send someone to jail for making coincidental remarks, but you can prove that there's a pattern that goes beyond coincidence. You can prove that there is a phenomenon at work that is directly linked to your behaviour, your online searches, journal entries, things you say in your car, etc, etc. Far be it from me to be seen as a very um, uh, ethical and um, high, high priestess person, but um, I'm going to quote something from the Bible here, which says, um, the Ephesians 6.2, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And I think that's very apt for this story. What this is, is a conspiracy to pervert the course of justice. It's shocking. A lot of the time it's been ignored. I'm hoping this won't be ignored anymore because to further elongate my suffering is going to kill me. So rather than address each entity or person alone who has the potential to reject or gaslight me, um, I'm going to list here and on my website all the key players and referenced with evidence. Together, 
they constitute a powerful body of evidence that demonstrates a conspiracy to pervert the course of justice that victimises me, Richard McLean, and has robbed me blind of all prosperity and maliciously and intelligently and consciously redacted all of my prosperity and eroded my human rights, my equality before the law and my access to the law. In addition to that, it's also tortured me. This conspiracy is done is it's literally murdered me. The conspiracy and nuclear character assassination nearly murdered me because I had a suicide attempt in February 2021 inside Werribee Mercy Public Hospital and I was found accidentally unresponsive with no pulse and I was revived from certain death and to which I now suffer a cognitive brain injury and I was revived into a world of oppression where there was yet another cover-up at Werribee Mercy Hospital and all health agencies. Um, this tragedy was totally whitewashed and then I was victim blamed for wanting to die. No single person should have had to put up with the profound victimisation that has occurred to me over the years. Anyway, it's been nearly three years later after um, I survived my suicide attempt and for which I've got a cognitive brain impairment and all my oppressors walk free and they continue their audacious neglect. It doesn't get much worse. I've been literally maimed in the head. The profound, profound victimization which has caused detriment in emotional ways in psychological ways, in monetary ways, in my property ways, in political ways, in my reputational way, in all ways, has continued unbelievably, even though I am literally maimed in the head. Victimisation is illegal and millions of dollars have been lost from me and that is money that I hope to get back and I'm going to bankroll some really good charities out there. Listed here in this video are the guilty people, organisations, statutory authorities and agencies, my oppressors, both before leading up to the tragedy and after the tragedy. They act mostly as unaccountable, faceless officials, officials via proxy in order to delay, deny, defer justice. And I'll tell you what, that government mantra is just about to get a wake up call. So my name is Dr. Richard McLean and I had a public profile after I wrote a human rights award winning book called Recovering Not Cured, A Journey Through Schizophrenia, which was published by Alan and Numwin in 2002. Prior to that, I had a public role as well because I was an illustrator and news graphics artist at first for the Herald Sun and then for the Age. And I have had a, a life of, I think, a successful artist. In 2021, I got ill from work, partly due to this conspiracy that I was involved in and the workload that I was forced to do, and also in regards to my own child sexual abuse case that was thrown out by a Geelong magistrate. She non-validated my abuse and I was triggered by my own client's sexual abuse stories. And in addition to that, I was doing my client's vocat case and when I realised that there was a conspiracy to pervert the course of justice and that my name had been bandied through the mud and I lost my case, I realised then that it had rendered my important work with this client illegitimate and ineffective. From 2000 and uh, 2010 to 2015, I had a relationship with a, a nameless person. I don't think I'm not allowed to name him, but he was um, a person who first worked for Apple under Steve Jobs and then worked for ASIO under David Irvine. The government protects that man. 
I cannot get one statutory agency, the tax office, Centrelink, the police, the Office of the Prime Minister and Cabinet, ASIC, anyone to investigate how he exploited me and how he used me and how he then dumped me um, to the side of the road, basically the homeless person. I was also framed by a very powerful lawyer, Mr. Russell Ball, who is a person who advises government policy and advises and informs the Ombudsman. Um, these two key things, combined with my public profile, um, is a hotbed of um, action for being identified and um, vilified um, by agencies. Um, after, after all that happened, I lost out at every bit of advocacy that I could muster to stick up for myself. And that's after spending a lot of years, nearly 30 years, sticking up for marginalised people in the community and people with mental illnesses and their carers. And I was trying desperately to get my needs met and my life back on track after a very tumultuous life when my public was private and my private was public. However, my oppressors were too, far too organised and they always acted in faceless ways, via proxy, that kind of de-identified where my oppression was coming from. I was being financially abused, I wasn't getting my needs met, I didn't have access to a lawyer or equality before the law. And looking back in regard to the suicide attempt in 2021, it's no surprise that I failed in all and the victimisation that literally would have killed me in February 22. Um, it really is, from looking back in hindsight, a conspiracy to pervert the course of justice, which caused a death. I know I'm alive, but I was accidentally found and revived from death. And you know what would have been blamed? Mental illness. And that's the way that I've been vilified by identifying with mental illness in the public forum. What this is, is a conspiracy to pervert the course of justice and it goes to the highest officers in Australia. Presented together with the evidence, it's compelling um, fodder that just describes with undeniable consequence a conspiracy underpinned by powerful people of political privilege and monetary power. And it opposes one person, me, in its victimisation and vilification as a person with a mental illness. Mostly, these governments, lawyers, um, um, CEOs and other people all sit in ivory towers I mean, I've been an artist my whole life and I've created a lot of content in my life. And most of these people haven't created anything. They've created nothing original and they're paid by the government or the man to toe the party line of oppression that victimises me and is the causation of my poverty, then my homelessness, then my um, suicide attempt and its further cover up and the further injustice and the conscious, malicious and intentional reduction of all my prosperity that has been universal and the government through. So here we go. I used to work for the Herald Sun and the Age newspaper and when my human rights award winning autobiography Recovered Not Cured A Journey Through Schizophrenia came out, the Herald Sun vilified me with a defaming article and the Age fired me. I wasn't fired. I was fired. I, they said I left, but I, I wasn't. I was managed out. I was forced to leave. People who have unique perspectives and think outside the box aren't welcome in places where you've got to be like the others. I really, Alan and Unwin, my publisher, kind of unintentionally or intentionally um, vilified and took advantage of me in a way. I didn't get much money for that book, but um, my guts and were all out in the, in the public domain for everyone to read. That really damaged me and thrust me into a bit of a spotlight which I felt authentic about and which I wanted to do as a passion to help people with mental illness, but for which 
I was really far. Okay, there's Russell Ball. He's a person who um, informs government policy and advises the Ombudsman, and he's a very powerful lawyer. I had some evidence in a malpractice case, which, malpractice case, which was taken accidentally, and um, or it, unintentionally, and um, or without malice. And he actually silenced that evidence um, in a malpractice case at the following places. And he was a very powerful person. And even when they tried to silence the recording, which clearly showed the injustice of this particular issue, um, I translated it into words, but he silenced also the transcript of a recording that was already legal tender under the Surveillance Act 1998, I think it was. It's covered up at the following places. Here we go. Millennium Medical Center. They silenced that evidence. The Health Complaints Commissioner, they silenced that evidence. The Mental Health Complaints Commissioner, they silenced that evidence. The Police, they silenced the evidence. IBAC, the place that investigate the police, they silenced the evidence and they also rejected my whistleblower statement or my public interest disclosure. The Victorian Inspectorate silenced that evidence. APRA silenced that evidence. NHPOPC silenced that evidence. The Ombudsman silenced that evidence and rejected my public interest disclosure. The very Ombudsman with which our friend Russell Ball informs and advises government policy. I'm just going to go and list the people now and organisations that have done me wrong and how they have and naming them one by one. I've never been able to get a lawyer in this country and I've never been able to go to police and I've never been able to be a whistleblower. This is a very dangerous situation for me in which I'm left wide open for exploitation and further victimisation. I ended up getting a lawyer, John Boyle from MD Law. Um, he came into my life for six months, ex exploited me for all of my knowledge and all my evidence, worked with me for six months and didn't do anything and charged me $50,000 for the, for the pleasure of that. And now he's extorting me um, for $50,000 to get my own evidence back. Thanks, John. Real brave man you are. The Herald Sun fired me. The Herald Sun vilified me and publicly shamed me. The Age, Fairfax, fired me and were discriminatory in, in doing so. Same time, the Cunningham Dax Collection did a um, documentary on my life and art, but they exploited me. In Australia, exploited me. The Mercy Hospital, horrible place. They oppressed me and they identified me and vilified me. And then they silenced the um, suicide injury that occurred in February 2021, and there's still a cover up to this day. The Saltwater Clinic, Cade Mollison silenced all of that tragedy. Uh, they silenced the suicide injury and they oppressed me and they victimised me. After all this, I tried to get back on the pension when after my suicide attempt and Centrelink, the government wouldn't even grant me my pension again. They forced me back on JobSeeker and after I'd literally died and been revived, they expected me to look for work a week after I'd left hospital. The Child Institutional Sexual Abuse um, people are delaying, deferring, denying my justice despite enormous evidence to the contrary. It's a government agency and it's just elongating my suffering by redacting my prosperity. It's conscious, it's malicious, it's happening right now. I've never been able to go to Victoria Legal Aid. They haven't helped once to provide a lawyer and I've got evidence that as soon as I ring them up, they psychometrically profile me and they get my name and my number and then they don't help. Same goes for the Law Institute of Victoria. There's no traction, no justice, no equality before the law, no access toward the law. I want to say too, the Mental Health Legal Centre have been absolutely gutless in not actioning me and so have the Mental Health Legal Centre. Villa Manta didn't respond to my plea. Um, Vimiac, the Victorian Mental Illness Awareness Council, ignored me and um, uh, in regards to my, um, the death threats that I'm getting um, from my former partner to kill my dog, um, the following people, well, it's been universally ignored. It's not okay to get death threats to kill your dog or me. 
Linda Davis from Monash Health, and she also wants to put me on a depot and in hospital, she reckons, because it's me who's um, upset and distressed. Um, Dylan Damage from Monash Health ignored my story and death threats um, that I whistle woo on, the, on them on. Um, Miranda Holt from Guidestar toes the party line in not calling out this conspiracy for what it is. She is some help, but she won't report on the conspiracy. Free Living Australia, sorry mate, <laughs> that's someone from Free Living Australia here. They won't contact police despite the death threat and they won't call this out for what it is, which is a conspiracy to pervert the course of justice and they're supposed to be caring for me. The justice.vic.gov.au, they refuse to respond to me begging for help. The um, Office of Public Prosecutions rejected help with my power of attorney. Um, Business mentoring, ignored my plea to get some business mentoring. Bendigo Bank cancelled a $20,000 complaint and they just said go to Africa. But of course, as we know, I'm banned from Africa. They won't respond to me in email and they won't respond to me on the phone. VOCAT, the Victims of Crime Tribunal. There's a Geelong magistrate, I can't remember her name. She threw out my child sexual abuse claim saying I was quote unquote, doomed to fail. Quite colourful language for a sexual abuse survivor. Turns out she's probably been talking to Russell Ball about me being potentially an extortionist, you know, who sets people up just to extort money out of him. What a load of bollocks. Over at HGF, when I got my psychological injury at work, Sheena Jack rejected my income assist. She oversees that whole place. This is a systemic and political ideology that victimises me. I've got clear evidence that my mental illness was not an issue before the psychological injury. And that should be paid on its merits alone. Back in 2000, I think, 2007, I think the ACCC um, neglected a settlement um, with work cover. In, in, in going forward to 2021, oh no, from 2008, Health Super or AIA gaslit me and cancelled insurance. I'm owed another $500,000 insurance from an old policy I got a payout for in 2008 because I have extra units of cover and I can prove it. Health Super and AIA have just absolutely gaslit me and won't even get back to me. There's Tim Goss over at AFCA. He's a person who delayed, denied, deferred my justice over the six weeks of a marginalised financial person that it's supposed to take. And um, he absolutely knew what he was doing um, when he elongated um, the YouTube video, which you can see on YouTube, actually. I recorded it. And like, likewise, the Australian Human Rights Commission, Liz Lindsberg, she was totally not impartial in ruling a one, potential $1.5 million case be thrown to the opposition. And I know it's the government that was in the way, because when the government were out of the way, I went straight to the super company TAL and Australian Super and I asked for a settlement and I got one. ASIC, the Australian financial regulator, won't investigate the exploitation of me by my former partner Steve Isonides and um, won't investigate his um, corrupt um, uh, money laundering that I know about. APRA rejected my public interest disclosure and my freedom of information. Um, Steve Isonides, my former partner, exploited me for five years, took advantage of me. He's made threats to kill. And there's, of course, the little problem of his extortion and locking things up in offshore tax havens. ASIO, they, they upheld the Isonides exploitation despite having family values on their website. A family is a family is a family and a gay couple is a family. And when you're together as a family, you're supposed to look after one another and organisations and places of public authority are supposed to have responsibilities of the, um, the Mental Health Charter and the Human Rights Charter and mine have been absolutely destroyed. And then you've got AGIS who won't investigate ASIO or Isonides at ASIO and they just wash their hands of the whole thing. The Victorian Legal Bar, I actually wrote to them after years and years of not being able to find a lawyer and I asked them, is there a reason why I'm being rejected here? and there was no response. Same goes for Deborah Glass, the Victorian Ombudsman. No response. Ben Calder, the Ombudsman, whitewashed my brain injury in the suicide attempt and further repressed me and delayed, denied, deferred my justice and intentionally and maliciously redacted the potential of me to make a claim against the hospital. The Attorney General's office rejected my public interest disclosure. So did the Health Department. So did um, the, um, the Federal Court. 
Mark Dreyfus, the Attorney General, refuses to acknowledge me, my calls or my emails, and I don't expect to be treated differently, but when I'm a free citizen with a clean criminal record of the Australian democracy, I expect to be treated as a person who is in that democracy. The NDIS, they've locked up all my funds. I can't access my funds and they actually fired me. They hired me, I've got a contract with them, and they fired me. Um, they removed my contract and I can no longer work for them. Um, the NDIS Quality and Safeguards Commission, they fired me, cancelled the contract. Bill Shorten, the NDIS Minister, he just won't respond to me and I'm actually blocked from even emailing him. The same goes for the Australian Federal Court, blocked from emailing them and the same goes with other politicians as well. Micron 21, a website company, maliciously and intentionally went out to destroy my business, which was the architecture of my business and actually the URL of my ABN. That was everything to do richmclean.com.au and they went out of their way and they destroyed it, deleted it and then there was a cover up about it. The Small Business and Family Enterprise Ombudsman silenced the destruction of the website. Business.gov silenced the destruction of the website. The Telecommunications Industry Ombudsman silenced the destruction of the website. The Footscray Police have never done anything for me. Um, they just see me as some crazy raving lunatic, but they just absolutely the public officials doing the least they can to get through their day. They silenced the suicide attempt. They actually bullied me out of their, my home with the Mental Health Act. I couldn't stay there because I didn't want to go back to the hospital where I'd already suffered a fatal injury and get further oppressed and vilified for having apparently a mental illness when in actual fact it's poverty dressed up as stress. Um, they bullied me out of my home and I had to actually leave my home to avoid being incarcerated. That's called oppression, that's called victimisation. The Mental Health Tribunal wants to medicate me for all this. Why? Because they think I'm delusional. They think that it's all in my head. It is absolutely not. You know what? When I did my PhD in what's mad and what's not, I came up with a, a bit of a theme and that is that madness in individuals is extremely rare, but in society, it's the norm. The Mental Health Tribunal, you've been called out. It is illegal, immoral, and unethical to give a person a mind-numbing medication that um, dulls um, serotonin when, um, when I suffer dementia or dementia-like sy symptoms with my cognitive brain impairment. It is illegal and unjust. I don't want it, I don't need it, and I'm not crazy. It is you that has not acknowledged my story. At IBAC, I was refused my public interest disclosure. My police freedom of information was refused. Um, Comcare rejected my work cover claim on account of I'm not an employee for the purposes of the SRC Act, but in my refused um, public interest disclosure at the Federal Court of Australia, they've already acknowledged that they're indeed satisfied that I'm an employee of the Department of Social Security. That means that if my work cover case failed at the AAT, I would have the opportunity to appeal in the federal court. But as we know, I've already got a document from the federal court which states that they're satisfied I was an employee of the DSS, meaning I'm an employee for the purpose of the SRC Act, and meaning that my work cover, which is probably a total permanent disability payout now, should be immediately paid. At WorkSafe, they've banned me. They just refuse to speak to me. Danny Pearson, the Work Cover Minister, he failed to act despite legislation which says if liability can't be um, determined within 21 days, then it becomes the responsibility of the minister and the agency. It is absolutely Danny Pearson's position now to absolutely rule my work cover. If I'm not insured by Comcare, then where am I insured? Danny Pearson needs to act. Comcare have rejected the cover. Um, um, the Fair Work Commission, uh, I've got no traction on my complaint. Uh, the unions, they wouldn't help me. Um, the AAT are delaying, denying, deferring my work cover decision. And Kate Watson, a government lawyer acting outside the Charter of Human Rights for Persons with a Disability and outside ethics of being a lawyer by opposing me who has had to stick up for himself and who she well knows is a scapegoat and can't get um, legal support, is doing a disgraceful job there. She should be called out. 
the Commonwealth Ombudsman closed my complaint on all of this. The Australian Federal Police did not investigate any of my claims. The Office of Prime Minister and Cabinet at first stated my um, freedom of information to be voluminous and complex, which you would think having a former partner who is an ASIO agent and having a life in a public profile, which is senior speak in Australian Parliament, to Dubbo, to Warnable, to the ABC show, to, to the Today show, to Stateline, Dateline, ABC, SBS, right overseas to Montreal. Of course they would have a dossier on me. But at first they said it was voluminous, and next thing you know, they said that the documents do not exist. The Office of Prime Minister and Cabinet have refused my freedom of information, and that's called freedom of information for a reason. I was trying to get it to uncover this government tyranny which is oppressing me, and what did the government do? They oppressed me by ignoring it. The Attorney General, Michaelia Cash, um, refused to in, in, intervene when my um, Australian Human Rights Commission and AFCA case were going, and um, and I, I said, I predicted, this is back in 2022, that my case at the AAT was going to fail because it's under her portfolio. And she, like a lot of other people do, vilified me with mental illness and said, oh, you sound distressed, why don't you go to the SANE helpline and just refuse to intervene in the clear political injustice issues. Attorney General Mark Dreyfus refused to intervene or acknowledge me whatsoever. Um, and right up to the Elf, Anthony Albanese, the Prime Minister, he rejected helping me. This goes right to the top. I'm not making this story up. I've actually been an advocate for 30 years and I've helped people and I've prayed a lot and I've been proud to serve the Australian people, but the government is not serving me. This is an inequitable and unbalanced way that I've been victimised later in life for having such an honest and courageous account of my human experiences over my whole life. It's simply not possible to come to any other conclusion other than that this identifies me, vilifies me, victimises me, and further, that it's a conspiracy to pervert the course of justice. And I am its victim, and I am its scapegoat. On the other hand, I'm proud of what I've done. I've reached the dizzying heights of a doctorate and I've done a doctorate in what is mad and what isn't mad. And I've toured this whole world and exhibited the world over in my creativity and my advocacy. I am someone who's proud of my achievements and I can live in my own skin having done it all on my own independently. And with this video, justice is coming. I just want to say this has been really shit having to go through all this and try and keep it all up in my head. I get confused, I get anxious, I'm rashly paranoid there's a conspiracy and there is, and um, people mean me harm. It's not a nice feeling that people mean you harm. And I just want to say that in, um, in, in um, September of 2022, because I was squatting because I've got no money, the police kicked in the door, they cuffed me and took me to hospital as a political prisoner. And whilst I was in there for over two months, the hospital and the police oversaw Hung Ho of Edithvale, my old landlord, go to my home, where I used to live, and took everything to the tip. They cleaned it out. They waited till I wasn't there, they waited till I was powerless, and they went in and they maliciously destroyed the lot. That was my fridge, that was my books, my precious books, that was my, um, my drawings, my, um, my furniture, my antiques, all my prints, everything I had went to the tip. It's an unbelievable amount of injustice that I've had to go through. And when the hospital finally released me, only because they needed an extra bed, um, and they didn't know what to do with me, um, uh, they rejected me into a homeless shelter. And I was devastated because I um, couldn't be with my beautiful dog Crystal and I just wanted to get her back and I finally got her back um, and I've been in um, substandard accommodation ever since and living in abject poverty. Um, the abject poverty is because I'm only on a disability pension and 
for example, if I was living in a place in Mitcham, I would be getting just over a thousand dollars a fortnight, and um, which I'm grateful for. But all the same, I would have to pay over seven hundred dollars a fortnight just for a place to exist. It's been really impossible just to even get by, um, especially with this conspiracy around me and the way that prosperity has been intentionally and maliciously redacted from me and the fact that added up it's probably worth quite a handsome sum of money so if anyone could find it in their heart out there to help me i'm willing to sign a contract with the law depot of victoria which states that um any investment in my justice which allows me to literally eat um, i've been starving this last week um to be able to oppose this tyranny that's happening to me uh, anywhere from $50 to $5,000. I will repay that as soon as my detriments are paid. I'm really desperate right now. I just need something to get me over the line, something to feed my dog and I. And um, this is the life of a scapegoat. And sadly for me, my family and friends have forsaken me because, you know, I'm the mentally ill one and I'm in the too hard basket. But when a spectacular character assassination happens, such as it's happened to me, it's really difficult to get anyone over the line because they're full of stigma and judgment it's a human trait um i'd really like some support um if someone could i'll put my pay id down there and my email address too um please email me and please support me because i'm going to get justice and if it doesn't kill me first and one of the things i want to do is to give most of it back to charity anyway so i want to um, um bankroll the lost dogs home and um and the Banksy unit at the Royal 